Welcome to this month's edition of Disc Golf Monthly. In this month's show, we will be taking you back to some of the best player demonstration segments in the history of the show. First, we will be taking you back to the 89th show, which covered the 2011 Pittsburgh Flying Disc Open. Steve Brinster gives us a tutorial on the X-Step to help you improve your driving distance. Let's check it out. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Brinster. I'm here at Seneca Creek Disc Golf Course. And uh, today we're going to go over uh, what adding a hop can uh, do for your drive. Um, for me, it uh, enables me to get my lower body into position and um, enables me to get my weight over my back foot, which enables me to push through and uh, get some more power on my drive. So uh, check it out and uh, see if you can use it for your game. That's it for me. Try and use the hop to develop some power and some timing in your throw. Next, we will be taking you back to the 88th show, which covered the 2011 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Jeremy Colling gave us a sidearm tutorial that demonstrated techniques with a variety of discs. Let's check it out. Hey guys, uh, my name is Jeremy Colling, aka Big Germ from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I'm on Team Discraft, and I'm going to give you a brief clinic on throwing sidearm approaches with mid-range discs. I personally prefer to throw the Buzz or the ESP Meteor. Um, they are really good flip-up discs for me, which I think is the, uh, the best shot for any mid-range approach. Um, typically, you'll see people throwing a hyzer flip ride for the back end, and I try to do the same thing with my mid-ranges. So I take a straight disc like the Buzz, or I take an understable disc like the Meteor and I drop hyzer and I have them flip up and fly straight. Um, and I'll give you a couple of examples of what I'm doing and I'll talk about how I'm throwing. Um, first off, I'm gonna start off the grip. Um, I like to put my fingers in the rim like so, 45 degrees facing the inside of the rim. Take the middle of my middle finger, put it in the wedge of the disc and get a real comfortable grip. I'm not trying to grip it too hard, just a real comfortable, firm grip. It's not going anywhere. I can move back and forth and it's not slipping. Um, that's how I know I have a good grip. Secondly, I like to start off by looking at the tee pad, face on with the target, so that way I'm never turning my body away from it. I'm facing it the whole time. It's real easy for me to go point, shoot, and throw it straight at a target. Um, third, when I'm reaching back, I don't want to get too high. I want to keep it right here, right behind my body, level with the, the plane that I'm going to be releasing the disc at. When you start going up here, you're swooping and it's hard to control the angle of release, the height, all that kind of stuff. It's all about luck at that point. That's why I like to bring it straight back here, come straight across my hip, and keep it on the same plane all the way through. Uh, third, my elbow right on my hip. I never leave my elbow off my hip. When you start bringing it out here, you see people throwing overstable discs, they start to really deteriorate their, uh, their, their elbow. So by keeping it close in, I can utilize much more power by not throwing as hard, by keeping it close to my body. Just like you would with the backhand, pulling it straight across your chest, I try to keep my elbow right on my hip. Fourth, I keep my palm facing up. That way I'm not rolling my wrist over and I'm keeping the disc coming out at a hyzer angle and flipping up and flying straight. And that's basically what I'm trying to do. And from there, it's just all about feel and just learning how to figure out how your discs fly, all that stuff happens in the field. Fortunately, we have a wide, wide enough hole uh, to, uh, to see how these discs are flying. So here we go.
that wasn't so great. We'll try it again. We've got the Elite Z Buzz, and just try to release it a little bit of hyzer, have it flip up just a little bit, and fly straight. What I'm doing is I'm putting a lot of snap with my wrist and I'm really controlling how the disc is flying with my finger pad. I'm really getting a lot of feel from my middle finger coming off that disc and it's guiding the angle of the disc. You'll see this disc, it's really understable, so when I throw with a lot of hyzer, it's gonna stand up immediately and it's actually gonna finish left. That's an ESP meter, that's a really beat one. Typically they're not quite so understable, but that one's been in my bag for a long time. And so when I need to throw trick shots with it, really straight shots with little power, that's the disc I go with. I'm gonna try for one more buzz. The key is really to keeping your palm in the air when you're throwing a mid-range disc. If you're going to throw a buzz or anything that's less stable than, let's say, a drone or a wasp or a hornet, um, which are three other discs I really recommend that Discraft makes, uh, really you have to make sure that you're putting a lot of controlled wrist snap and that you're not fluttering the disc. Flutter creates uh, itself by not putting enough spin, so you really have to make sure that you're really snapping your wrist and that you're keeping your palm up, which are the two most important things, I think. And that's uh, Big Germ with a clinic on mid-range approaches. Well, that was some amazing insight on how to better your sidearm throws. Now we move to the 65th show, which featured coverage from the 2009 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Michael Johansson demonstrates how to throw a mid-range disc down the fairway while on hole one on the Sunnyside course at the Blockhouse Disc Golf Course. I'm Michael Johansson, Discraft Tour player. I'm just out here at the grain showing you how to throw a comet, throw it straight down these fairways you have out here, which are all trees, and you don't want to miss the fairway. You just want to get yourself a chance to play at the basket, give yourself a putt. On a fairway like they give you on the dark side out here, which are tight, narrow, they're not super long and needing a lot of distance. You're just looking to give yourself a putt. So when you take a when you take a comet or something like the, like a mid range. You want to just, I use almost a modified stand, uh, stack grip or fan grip, and it's just an easy throw. You let the disc, you want to let the disc do the work in the woods like this. You want to throw something that'll stand up, turn over, so you can aim left side and let it turn over a little bit and go to the, go towards the baskets. All you're looking for is a putt. So all you want to do is, you just, you take itself on something like this, you take a short run up, you don't need a long run up. So you just want something so you can come through nice and compact, you don't need a big, long reach through or something, it's keep your arm by your chest or something, so you can just flick it through. And just, you're just looking for a nice little clean release just to go with it. Hopefully this will work. Almost. It's close though, you just, you're looking to get something down there and have yourself a chance at a putt, just to get out of the woods, that's all you're doing. Thank you. Now we go to the 70th sixth show where we were shown by legendary putter Cam Todd how to improve on our putting mechanics to lower our scores. I'm Cameron Todd. I'm here to show you a couple of tips about putting. Um, I generally like to start with uh, a couple fundamentals. Uh, your stance, your grip, and your momentum. Uh, first thing, your stance is pretty important. You want to get comfortable just like any athletic position. Um, sometimes if you just you know, make a little jump and then land, you're gonna be in some kind of athletic position. So that's, you know, you can find yours by doing that. If nothing else, just get your feet about shoulder width apart and find yourself feeling comfortable. You need to have a, a little bit of spring in your leg, so that's why you're getting your leg position in a correct position. Uh, second thing I like to talk about is grip. Everybody has different grips. There's a few things to watch out for. You don't want the finger on the outside of the rim at all. You don't want the front finger cramping the disc, or you don't want any of these other fingers cramping the rim. You want everything to be natural, and just a natural closing hand, and barely coming around the disc. Primarily, you want to use your thumb and your two fingers to make a finger motion. Notice how my wrist is not moving at all, and my fingers move. 
Now, all I want to do is take a little bit of energy from my legs, and I want to transfer it through my hand with a little bit of finger spring. So, what I teach is down on two, up on one. And if you do that, you're going to get the momentum you need to transfer to your arm through the disc. So we're going to go down on two, up on one. Down on two, up on one. That was some fantastic insight brought to you by Camp Todd. Now let's check out Jeremy Colling once again from the 53rd show, which featured covers from the 2008 Trees Tournament at Lums Pond. Big Jerm, as he's known, shows us how to improve on your driving distance while at the Hawk Hollow course in Spotsylvania, Virginia. Hey, my, my name is Jeremy Colling. Uh, I'm here with Discraft. Uh, let's show you a little bit about how to throw some distance shots. Um, I'm using the brand new high speed driver Discraft came out with, the ESP Force. Um, this thing is just super overstable and super fast. So, what I like to do is I like to warm up with a little towel throws. Get your arm loose, get your cores and your, uh, your technique right before you go out there and rip it. Uh, this is how I grip it. It's my power grip. My power grip. It's unique to most people's, but. I mean, everybody has different grips, so it's just whatever feels most comfortable to you. So. Woo! That's, and I'm gonna throw a couple side arms here. When I hold my sidearm, and that's usually the throw I go to for most accuracy shots, I keep two fingers tucked in tight on the rim. And uh, when I'm releasing it, I want to make sure that my elbow is 90 degrees away from my hip, tucked in tight. And I want to swing my hips before I bring my arm across my body. And I just want to follow through, pointing to the direction that I'm trying to aim. Next, we move to the 52nd show, which featured coverage from the 2008 Virginia Open Tournament. Jeff Bennett gave us a tutorial on his sidearm techniques. Jeff has a reputation for being one of the best sidearm players in the game, so sit back and enjoy the insight. I'm Jeff Bennett. I'm from Canton, Michigan. I'm on Team Discraft. I throw primarily forehands. Um, today I'm going to show you guys a little bit about how I throw and some of the techniques that go into throwing the forehand. Uh, first off I want to show you guys is my grip is uh, basically two fingers on the inside rim. Just cram them in there. On the uh, outside I got two fingers stacked on the outside. Just your thumb wherever it feels comfortable. I got it really pressed in there uh, underneath. My knuckle here it acts as a pivot point of where I release uh, my throw. Um, main thing with forehand is I do the uh, X step, uh, just opposite of backhand, just just to get me going in the right direction. Um, one of the main things you need to know is keeping your elbow in when you throw. It'll uh, it'll help you from getting injured and. You know, the guys that are way out here, it's just like your arm is just all over the place. You don't have as much control. But if you pack it in here tight against your side, you'll be able to get more control. And uh, as I'm coming through with my run up, I'm going to show you guys how I keep my uh, forearm even with my hips. So it comes in like there's a straight line right here. You can see this pop point where it's just bam. And then I just follow through and and kind of just, bam, right there. I, I aim at my target with my offhand, and that just shows me, lines me up, shows me where I need to go. I'm gonna throw a couple for you guys. Pretty close. Now on that, on the, on the harder throws, you really gotta make sure your hips are coming through because you gotta get all your body into it. It can't be just your arm.
I was a little low, came over on it. Uh, I primarily throw uh, Z Talon or the new ESP Forces. Uh, I throw the Forces for a longer distance shot, Talon's more for an accuracy shot. I'm Jeff Bennett from Disc Golf Monthly. Hope that'll help improve your game. What an amazing segment by Jeff. Now we're going to another punting demonstration from Brian Swayberger, which aired an 87th show that featured coverage from the Brenton Hambrick Memorial Open. All right, my name is Brian Schweberger. Um from Tarboro, North Carolina. I'm uh, sponsored by Innova Champion. I'm on Team Champion. I've uh, been there for since 2002. And today we're going to go over uh, what kind of putters I use and the situations I use them in during uh, your basic tournament round. Um, my main putter is uh, a Glow Big Bead AVR. It's really flat. I, I like the really flat. It keeps my hands a little bit closer together instead of my thumb being up a little higher like they would be on this on your KC AVR. And uh, also on longer putts and some up shots I'll use a, a Sonic. It's a, a very user friendly disc. It flies very straight. Some, it'll, uh, it turns over really easy so I can use it on uphill putts and it floats for a longer period of time with a lot less effort. So it, it's uh, come in very handy for, for me for the last four years. Um, let's go with uh, your basic, my basic putts right here. <sighs> my nice glow AVRs. They work good. I, I like to, I, may, I like to use them on headwind putts because they seem to hold a line a lot easier for me than putting with the KCs. I, I still putt with the KCs, but it's, I have a lot more confidence with this. I'm starting to run out of them, so I'm starting to work back into the, the KC AVRs. But, uh, yeah, we'll try it again. Yeah, they, they work real well. Um, go over here, try a different wind. Seems to hold the line without getting abused by, by the lift with uh, these KCs. They're a little bit domier. I'll, I'll use these in less windy situations. But we'll fall with it anyway. Still works. Um, now, Sonics, they're, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to be more of a tailwind situation. Wind's blowing this way, so I'm going to go come back here and I can throw these more on a straight line and not have to worry about the disc hyzering off of its line. And now the wind's switched, it's swirling. So uh, we'll try it anyway. The wind's going to abuse it. Uh, yeah, see how it floats nicely with the, just a, with little effort? And that's why I like so I don't have to have a long comeback on uh, any long putt situation. Next, we move to Paul Uliberry, who gave us a jump putting tutorial during the 90th show, which featured coverage from the 2011 Pittsburgh Flying Disc Open. Jump putting can be controversial, so follow this segment closely in case you want to perform this style of putt during a round. Hi, I'm Paul Uliberry, and I'm going to be demonstrating the jump putt. A jump putt is legal when you are outside the circle, as we call it, and uh, that is 33 feet and six inches, I believe. And then it's legal to jump forward. And why you want to jump forward is so that your momentum's going towards the basket, and you get a little extra on your putt. Thank you, I'm Paul Uliberry with Team Innova. In this next segment from the 80th show at the Nakamix and Hoodoo, we have Philo Brathwaite, who demonstrated some maneuvers on how to approach throwing over water. How's it going? I'm Philo Brathwaite from Oak Grove, Pasadena, world's first golf course, permanent anyway. So uh, today I'm going to talk about throwing over water and not being afraid of getting over that water. Sometimes it can be a little uh, frightening when you step up on the tee and you got a 350 foot long hole with 
most of it over water. So uh, what I was thinking about telling you guys is how to line yourself up and aim for a shot over water and give yourself the best chance to clear the water without having any danger. Actually just taking the water out of play, especially when you got a hole like this where you got a lot of room out to the right to get yourself over the water safely. If you don't have the arm speed or the strength to throw 350 feet downhill on a straight line, you probably want to put a little flex on your disc and use the right side of the fairway as much as possible. So I'm going to try to demonstrate that without throwing my stuff into the water. Throw a firebird, something that's so overstable. Try to put a little bit of a flex and I guess you can uh, imagine if that white chair was the basket, which is pretty close to where it is. It's actually that dirt spot kind of over the center of that pond there, right past the big bricks. But, uh, just to use that chair for a reference and pretend that's your basket. You want to aim past those guys out there with the dog off to the right side of them and just try to swing something out there and take that whole water out of play instead of trying to go straight. Use that right side of the fairway. Hopefully it's something like this. Actually about two feet farther. I can jump up further but you don't know Throw something over stable, you don't really have the. That's what I usually do you just pop it out there on a little bit of turn, not a whole lot of turn. You don't want to rip it over like you're throwing an Anheuser shot, but just a, we call that a hyzer flex actually, is when you flex the disc and you know it's coming back on a hyzer, guaranteed. I'll try it again so you can get another look at it. Right chair. You're online. Aim right. <laughs> Take the water out of play. Don't even look at the water. Aim for a spot beyond the water out there in the distance and make sure you keep it flat and give it a ride. You should be all right. What a great way to help build your confidence on playing over a water hazard. Now we have Liz Carr from the 66th show from the 2009 Vibram Open demonstrating to us how to get out of trouble by using overhand throwing techniques while at the Blockhouse Disc Golf Course. Hi, I'm Liz Carr and I'm on Discraft's women's team and today I'm going to show you how to get back out onto the fairway. For this type of a shot, I just want to get back onto the fairway. I'm not looking for distance. So I'm going to throw a pancake shot because it's only going to go, <clears throat> excuse me, it's only going to go about 80 feet but it's going to put me back into the middle where I can make a good up shot from there. Here we go. back in the fairway. Now we're going to the 86th show from the 20th annual Seneca Soiree Tournament. Joe Mila shows us how to get our backhand roller shots down to improve our scores. Hi, my name's Joe Mila. I'm going to demonstrate a backhand roller. First, what you want to do is when you come up to the end of the tee pad, getting ready to throw, you're going to be arching your back a little bit. And what you want to do is you want to have that disc come out about right here so you get some arc. And as you throw the arc, it's going to start to move from right to left. And you want to land it in the middle of the fairway. <clears throat> That's a little bit early. Not horrible. Let's see if we can move it over a little bit more. Same thing. Just a little bit of arc in the back. A little more power on the shot. That's better right down the middle. Hold the line. That one was pretty good. Now we'll try one a little bit more stable. Same power. That's pretty good right there. That should be good. Oh, might get a leaner out of this. Turn, lean on the pin. Oh, I went behind it. Not bad. What do you think about that? That was quite a demonstration by one of the best roller throwers in the history of the sport. Now we're going to wrap up the show by going back to the 48th show where Brian Schwaberger shows us how to throw thumber shots to improve our game while at the Virginia Team Invitational Tournament. 
Hi, my name is Brian Schwelberger, and y'all are here today to watch me and try and learn to throw the overhand hook thumb, also known as the thumber. Um, when I throw mine, I'm throwing a very overstable disc. Uh, here I got uh, three Firebirds and one Star Whippet X. Uh, I'll start off with the least stable Firebird and work my way up to the more stable disc, the Whippet X, and uh, we'll see how they progressively get a little further as I go. When I'm throwing it, I wrap my first digit of my index finger around with my thumb pinched in, so if I try to pull it out, it's in there really tight, so it, uh, I get a lot, of, a lot of snap and a lot of power on it. Here we go. When I'm, when I'm doing my approach, I do like a basic outfielder's throw to the, when it's throwing from the outfield to the infield, doing a little crow hop. It uh, creates the line that I want to throw and helps me get some more power in it with, with my entire body. Another firebird. When I'm throwing it, I'm trying to release it probably about a 45 degree angle off my shoulder from, from, from level to 45 degrees, not too high or you won't get enough forward penetration on the shot for distance. All right, now this Whippedex, this one pans really slow, so it gets a little bit more distance. It's a slower disc than the Firebird, but for some reason it goes about 30 feet further than all of my Firebird shots. All of my discs, they're all max weight, 175 grams. Uh, it just feels better when I'm throwing. It's less, less wear and tear from trying to throw something really light. So I always start trying to stick with max weight plastic. Well, that's all we have for now. Join us again next month for another edition of Disc Golf Monthly, the show that takes you one step closer to the sport of disc golf.